Hi everyone! In this tutorial we're gonna be texturing this Tuk Tuk model in Substance Painter and rendering with Arnold inside Maya. This is the final result, not perfect by any means, but this will be a good exercise for beginners and also a chance to work with the ACES workflow that is now the default color management in Maya and we can also set it up inside Substance Painter. Here I'm showing you the texture model inside Substance, which may look a bit different to the final rendered image, since in Arnold we are using ray tracing and here is just OpenGL for preview purpose and speed. Now in Maya, you can see that the model is not merged altogether, it's made of different parts and also I converted the initial geometry to eye poly to avoid texture stretching in the edges of the geometry. I can also show you the UVs which has 6 different tiles that will help us render this project in high resolution. Now in Substance Painter let's create a new project importing the latest version of the asset. We'll be using 4K textures, use UV tile workflow and finally we'll select Open Color IO and select ACES. So let's start by creating a folder for our first material. In this case I will be using a smart material called Iron Forged Old. But of course this won't look correct without baking the maps first. So let's bake mesh maps, I won't change much here, just set it to 4K, use low poly mesh as high poly mesh and uncheck ID maps since we won't use it. Ok, the baking is done, you can take a look at the different maps created in the channels drop down. Right, let's start with the first material, creating a folder for it and dragging the iron forged old smart material inside the folder. Let me change the texture resolution to 2K so we can work faster in the viewport. In the end, we'll export the maps as 4K so it's fine. Using a black mask in the folder, we can select the desired parts with the polygon fill tool. And then with the tool set to mesh fill, you can select the parts that will use this material. Ok, now I will hide everything in that smart material and start with the base. Here I'm going to change the base color to a reddish tone, in this case I have a saved out color to use, that I know will look similar to the final result. Now we can unhide some of the other overlays and I think the dirt is a bit too intense. So let's add a paint layer to the mask and selecting a brush like the dirt tool, we can remove some of it. You can switch between black and white with the X key. Alright, checking the other layers, mainly the edges, we can increase a bit the wear level. I also want to add some of that wear in other parts, so let's add a paint layer and paint some of that detail. Ok, don't forget to save your progress and let's move to the next material. Right, creating a new folder for the chrome parts in the front, let's select again a smart material, this time the chrome blue tint. Create a black mask and using again the polygon fill tool, select the parts that will have this chrome material. 
Here I'm lowering the opacity of some layers that are a bit too intense, especially the tinting effect. I also want less roughness, so let's change that in the base metal properties. We might change it in the end if it's too reflective. Ok, let's copy the edges fill layer from the red metal folder and paste it in the chrome group, so it adds a bit of variation to the chrome. You might need to play a bit with the settings to get the desired result. Now we'll add a bit of rust, so in the asset panel search, search for rust fine. This one will work for the effect I want to add. We just need to change a bit the color. I have a saved out one that will work fine. Let's add a mask, in this case a smart mask called Cavity Rust. As you can see, he is working pretty nice in some parts. I, cho I just chose to remove some paint and also add it to other parts of the chrome. Ok, let's export all the textures so we can test in Maya how it's looking so far. So let's select the export folder and I am also selecting a preset template I created for this project, but I will show you how to create your own. So in the output templates tab, select one of the Arnold presets and duplicate it. In this case I am just going to remove the opacity channel since we're going to work with that later on. Let's get back to the settings tab and select the newly created template. I will also be using EXR textures and a resolution of 4K. You can check your list of exports and everything looks fine so let's click to export it. Just take time to save out your project and let's go to Maya. In Maya I have a basic scene set up with a skydome light and a disc as a floor. I am going to assign the default lamber to everything so we can start fresh. Let's open up the hypershade and assign a standard surface to everything. Now creating a file texture, selecting one of the base color EXRs and don't forget to set the tiling mode to UD Mary. Then you just need to connect the out color to the base color of the shader. Let's do the same for the roughness, this time connecting one of the color channels to the specular roughness of the shader. Now the metalness. And don't forget to set the UD Mary in the tiling mode. For the metalness you can connect one of the channels like the out color R to the metalness attributes of the Arnold shader. I am just showing you that I have a skydome light with a camera and transmission attributes set to zero. This is a personal preference. Ok, this is our result. Maybe we can tweak the dirt level on the red metal. Let's save the Maya scene and get back to the substance. Just take the time to paint out the parts where the black dirt is too intense and we can move on. So let's create the tires folder and again with the polygon fill select the tires. I am also adding a green fill to help me visualize the selected parts of the model. Now for the base we're going to use only color and rough, select a dark color for the tire and you can also set some initial roughness value. 
Let's duplicate the base layer and for this one we're only going to affect the roughness channel. Let's add a texture and play with the scale and balance until we're, we're happy with the resulting roughness values. Now in a new fill layer let's affect only the eye channel and select a noisy texture from the library. Play again with the settings, here I am adjusting the scale, setting it to triplanar and also changing the balance. I also added a levels adjustment to clamp a bit the results. We obviously need to reduce the effect of the bump mapping, so choose the eye channel in the drop down menu of the layer stack and reduce the opacity of the layer. So now we'll add some dirt to the tires, create a new fill layer with only color and rough selected. For the color I have a previous chosen value and set the roughness to around 0.56. Now add a smart mask, in this case the soft dirt one, and you can play a bit with the balance. Let's duplicate the dirt one layer and remove the associated mask. Enter a different value for the base color and also add a black mask. Now we'll add a generator for a custom mask. In this case we'll use the mask editor. Adding a grunge map to the generator and adjusting the settings. Make sure you set the texture opacity to 1, so we can see the effect of the grunge map. This might look a bit too much, but in Maya we'll see that the effect is not so visible. Now we can export out the textures. In Maya let's create the shading network for the bump mapping with a file connected to a bump to the nodes and finally to the normal camera of the shader. This is the result we get, as you can see not so noticeable as in Substance. Let's just go to the render settings and add, and add the normal AOV to make sure our bump mapping is working. And it's subtle, but we can later on increase the effect if needed. So that's it for the first part, we'll continue the texturing and look dev of the Tuk Tuk in the next tutorial. Thank you for watching, see you in the next video. Bye bye.